everybody. Solomon's Tales again. Don't know the number. So, we left it. Ning and Solomon in Cambodia. We just had a night in a little bit of a town. Everything was good. Morning come. And Solomon went off, found some coffee. Ning, email. And then came the news. He gets back with the coffee and Ning announces that her boyfriend, supposed to be non-boyfriend, who's still sending her money, is on his way to Bangkok, coming back over to see her sort everything out. Oh, great. Always the way when things are going so well, something like this happens. So what are they going to do? They're about four hours down from Phnom Penh, southwest. They've got the two bikes. And Ning says to Solomon, she'll head back to Phnom Penh with the bike. Um, she'll take it to Jeff at the bar and he can sort it out. And uh, she'll go to the airport of Phnom Penh, fly back to Bangkok and sort her fella out. Oh, well... What could Solomon do? He can't say no. So he thinks, well, okay, are you going to be okay? She's fine with bikes. Are you going to be okay getting back to Pompem? Yep, yeah, no problem. And off she goes. She packs her bag, throws her rucksack on the back, gives him a kiss, says, I'll see you soon, and heads off in the wrong direction. Well, from where he wants to go, she heads off back. Pompeii. There he is, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. It's a huge long ride to Schluckville or whatever it's called. And he's on his own. Never mind. It's an adventure. It's going to happen, so. Has his coffee. Pays the bill for the room. Chucks the bag on his back. Gets on the bike and thinks, oh well. Here we go, day one of a new adventure, solo. And off he heads. The roads, again this was road number 48, whatever. he had no idea how far it was. The map was that he had was terrible. But he was told it was a good long ride. Road surface, really bad at this point. It's getting worse and worse as he's going. And this is 15 years ago. Imagine now it's a smooth, beautiful motorway. But then, no, and not much as far as civilization, the odd farms and things. And the hope there's a fuel garage down that road. It's the only main road back in those days going down that way, so there had to be. And he heads off. He keeps his speed reasonable. It's like 45 kilometers an hour. He's just trickling it along, taking in all the scenery. And it's beautiful, absolutely stunning. Stunning country. Um, and he keeps going. A couple of hours down the road, he finds a sort of a bit of a tin shed house, but there's a shop at the front. Pulls in. And he thinks any time he can get fuel, he'll get it. And luckily, they've got fuel there in bottles. Mm. So they're pumping it out of a barrel into bottles. So he tops up the bike. Doesn't take much pennies now he's got no is it ringgit or whatever the currency is in Cambodia all he's got is dollars so he's like mm, I hope this is going to be all right and he gets a couple of can of Red Bull or whatever it is and he gets a, a couple more and throws in his backpack a couple of bags of crisps and uh, gives a couple of dollars to this girl no problem takes the money comes back with some coins so ringgits or whatever they are so throws them in his pocket. Doesn't even know how much it all was, but it wasn't much, it was less than a couple of bucks. So cheap, so cheap. And he tries to say to the girl, Schluckville, pointing up that way, and she hasn't got the foggiest what he's saying. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and off he goes again. Now, he does a stint of about another three hours. Um, it's coming to about one, two o'clock in the afternoon. And he's getting, it's tiring, just on those roads, all the potholes and stuff. 
bike's taking a bit of a pounding. And he's coming round, a bit of a forest section, comes round a bit of a hill, a corner, and in front of him he sees what I would call a village. Now, maybe 20 houses, but on the left is a garage. Well, sort of a garage. A um, bit of a forecourt, but with pumps for fuel. And a shop. And you can see some other bits. So down he comes the hill, into the garage. The guy comes over. So he fills the bike up. Again, it's pennies. Goes into the shop, and this shop's got... Well, it's, it, it's a sort of shop. It's, it's got some shelves, and it's got all sorts of food. It's got some fridges with beer in. Um... So it's got quite a bit. And outside is some a couple of street vendors selling cooked chicken and pork and fish and bits. So he, he pays the guy for the fuel. Again, it's only a couple of bucks. And as I look around, and across the road he notices what looks like it's a little bar. A bit of a tin shed, but it's got some looks like lights that aren't on at the moment outside hanging um, I can make out some tables in there looks like a jukebox in the corner but next to it is a, a sign that he's seen quite a bit and you can see these single story rooms like motels rooms but only one story and the woman selling the food he points across and does it the old you know sleep sign and, and she's yeah and he thinks this is probably my best chance because I don't know how far Schluckville is. I'll get a room over there. I'll stay here the night. And I'll see if I can get hold of Jeff. Now his phone has got a Thai SIM card in. It's not it's empty, doesn't work. So the phone's not working. Anyway, he thinks I'll get some food, I'll go over to the room, see if I can get a room. Buy some chicken off this woman, fried chicken, looks quite nice. Again, dollar. Gets his bike, food in one hand in a bag, <laughs> rides across the road um, to these rooms, parks the bike, and there's a guy there, goes over to him. He's got a little bit of an office, sort of a room with a, a window as an office. Guy takes him over to there and his room, you know, how much, pulls out the dollars, and the guy sort of said, four dollars <laughs> for a room, four dollars, fabulous. So he gives the guy four bucks, the guy gives him a key and points to the number on the key, points to the room, that's great. Then Solomon sends him telephone, if you've got, tel and the guy's got a phone, and the guy's like, one dollar. <laughs> whatever it's all money all about money pulls a dollar is a dollar guy passes the phone old-fashioned phone Solomon digs up his phone he's got, at least he's got the phone numbers in there he's got Jeff's number rings the numbers it keeps ringing for a bit luckily Jeff answers now um, for the time Solomon has been traveling Ning should have easily got back and he says to Jeff, Ning had a problem. Did she come back with a bike as she returned it? Yes. Oh. Solomon could, a sigh of relief, he's not going to end up having to pay for a motorcycle that a Thai girl has dumped at the airport and legged it. Um, Jeff said he got the bike, he dropped it back, all was good. And was he okay? Solomon was, yep, yep, fine. And Ning had gone off in a taxi to the airport. So, all good. Anyway, Solomon says, thanks to Jeff. I'll see you next time when he comes back. Phone down. Sorted. Happy. It was that little worry in the back of his head. So, dives in the room. A horrible room. It's got a double bed. It's got a fan. It's not very clean. It's hot. There's a window at the front and a door. And the room's only about four, foot, four meters square. And in the corner is a wall, no door with an open plan toilet in the hole in the floor, and a bucket with water in, and a bit of a hose coming off the wall, which was the shower. Oh dear. Anyway, someone thought, whatever. Sits down, eats his chicken. 
as I lie down, falls, goes flat out, a couple of hours, fast asleep. He wakes up a bit later, right, I'm going to have one of these showers. Huh. It was freezing cold water coming out of this pipe. Oh, horrible. <laughs> freezing. Has a shower, change of clothes, and it's, it's probably six o'clock, early evening still. He thinks, right, could do with some more food. Comes out, leaves his rucksack in the room, locks the room, comes out. To the right he can see more buildings, a bit of a street. He thinks he'll just have a wander down there. It's only a few hundred metres. He walks down and there's a little cafe restaurant. It's the tin tables, the tin chairs, about four tables and a woman, big open wok, cooking all sorts. He thinks, great. She gives him a menu, can't read it, there's no pictures, there's nothing. He thinks, oh. He stands up and walks over to the woman's where she's cooking and it's, you can see some pork and he's pointing at that and it rice and she's like okay she knows what it, you know okay foreigner meat and rice so she knocks up a dish and it's lovely he has that really nice he has a coke and they give her a met give him a metal cup with ice and a straw and a little bottle of coke and it's just metal cup Tastes horrible, but pff, there we go. One and a half dollars, something like this. Anyway, he, he only had, he was getting low on the dollars. He had ten dollar bills, and I think fifty dollar bills. He, anyway, he, no low numbers, so I think he gave her a ten dollar bill, but she was fine. But she gave him all the change in Cambo Cambodia money, so he didn't have a foggy as what he just how much he'd paid, <laughs> no idea. Wasn't prepared properly for the exchange rates and all of that, he could have been just ripped off, but he had no idea, whatever. Anyway, food, coke, brilliant. Walks back up and he thinks, you're gonna go to that bar, get a beer. It's starting to get dark, it gets dark early there. They've got the lights on, walks into this front, so there's a metal shutter that's open, Walks in, there's four wooden tables with any old dining room table, chairs, different variety of them. Light in the background pointing down on a jukebox which was playing Thai music, you know, Cambodian music or something like that. Pointing down. On the right was this, this bar. It was literally a metre long, chest high with a bit of wood on top. God knows what it was made of. And behind it, perched on it, just like everywhere Solomon goes, is this grumpy old lady. Just got that look about her. Old, haggard, miserable looking. Anyway, so she's there. Right in front of him, in the corner, is quite a modern jukebox. Playing this music. And there's two girls. To the left is quite a pretty sat down, quite a pretty girl, 25, 30, pretty. To the right is a girl that looked like she'd been a, a professional wrestler for 20 years and lost every fight. Oh. And they just stared at him. And the woman on the bar stared at him. And he thinks, hmm. The wrestler bangs a jukebox, hits some buttons, the music changes. What she put on? Elvis. You ain't nothing but a hang dog. Just sums up the look of that wrestler and the grumpy old lady. You ain't nothing but a hang dog. <laughs> anyway, he thinks, okay, gonna get a beer. He sits down at the table. Or should he have ordered off the grumpy woman or sit, and he sits down. And sits, and sits. And then the grumpy owner, presume it was the owner, shouts at the girls. So the wrestler comes over. No, no menu. Just like, you know, what do you want to drink in Cambodian? And well, that's what he guessed. She said, "He's like singer, Leo, Tiger, Chang, 
and she's just staring at him and like, beer? Oh, her eyes lit up. Yeah. She put her hand out to him for money. She didn't say how much. He's like, oh, God. Yeah, okay. So, into his pocket, and he's got all this Cam Cambodian money, and he's no idea how much it is, and he's like, puts his hand like that. And she grabs a couple of the notes. And he thinks, why am I paying first for the beer? That's strange. And she walks over to the grumpy lady. Grumpy lady says something and gives her something. I mean, there's bottles behind the grumpy lady, but they're all empty. Vodka and whiskey, all the rest of it, all empty. Anyway, the grumpy lady says something and gives her something. And the rest walks across the road to the garage. <laughs> He's like, what? Yeah, over the garage. She comes back, carrying a bag, one bottle of beer, and a bag of ice. Up to the grumpy lady. They muck around for a second, and then the wrestler turns around. She comes across with a glass, a half pint, ice in it, and the bottle of beer with the top off. The beer was cold, luckily. Now, in Asia, you if you've been, they always give you ice in a glass if the warm beer, so they, and it, that's horrible. So anyway, bottle of beer, Solomon gets the glass with the ice, turns around, throws the ice over his shoulder, out the bar onto the road, then pours the beer into the glass. The look the grumpy lady gave him, as if she, he looks could kill, she was just like, Ugh because she just bought ice and he just thrown it away. Well, actually, he probably just bought the ice. She was, he, he just paid for it anyway. And he's thinking, where are they making their profit from this? Did she take more out of my hand for this beer? Maybe, they must be making a profit, somehow. Anyway, there he is with his beer. And we've gone way over time. We'll continue this on the next one. <laughs> See you soon, bye.